Wow, what a group, right? Welcome, everyone. Does everyone have a drink? Okay, we're going to get a um, bar break in about 25 minutes. Because the bar officially closes at 8. So we're going to have like a three-minute run out, go get your drink, come back, break. So figure out what you're going to want, but listen to the presenters at the same time. Not too hard. Also, feel free to just, you know, go up and get what you need when you want. So, um, welcome to Big Screen, Little Screen. Uh, this tonight's uh, topic is where web series meet Twitter. And for those of you that may know the uh, meetup that we do, we do this on a monthly basis, this is the swankiest we've ever been. <laughs> we uh, started on couches, drinking PBR and whatever else we could get cheap. And then we went to a penthouse at Edelman, and then we went to Digitops's big digital media offices, and now we're here in Swankyville overlooking the FDR. So thank you for swankifying with us. Uh, I'd like to introduce Chris Chang, who is um, one of the co-founders of uh, the Meetup Big Screen Little Screen. Uh, um, my name is Paul Cantonis. We are missing Matt Semmel, who is also one of the other founders. He's off on a very important trip visiting a very special person, so he couldn't be with us tonight. So, uh, Chris, is there something you wanted to say? Um, Use the mic. I understand this is how you talk to a lot of people. Um, <laughs> Matt and I, with Paul, started this meetup a while ago. Um, to uh, there were a lot of there were a lot of events that mainly dealt with technology, but we wanted to do a meetup that really focused on the content side of web on a video on the internet. And so we've been doing this uh, meetup for, uh, I don't know, actually quite a while now, and uh, it's fantastic to have you guys here. And uh, Paul, take it over. <laughs> so uh, thank you again. So if you're tweeting, it's SMW Digitas. The Wi-Fi is uh, Appella, and the password is Appella in case you need it. Uh, the way the format works is we're going to introduce up one of the presenters. They're going to introduce themselves, what they're going to talk about, what they're going to show. We see, get to see some cool stuff. Then it's basically open to Q&A for you guys, okay? And that's the way it's pretty much going to move. After, probably after Shorn Entertainment and Break Media, the second presenters, we'll get our booze break. Go, come back. It also includes potting if you need it, so hold on. And uh, we'll go from there. We are live streaming right now, and we've got how many people watching? Thirteen. I think we set the record for Social Media Week live stream. Oh no, maybe the guy from Foursquare had it, but he was so late, he lost everybody. So, oh, sorry. Okay, so we're going to start first off with uh, Terrence Gray for the New York TV Festival. And so, uh, welcome Terrence. Hey, good evening. Uh, I want to first of all thank Paul and everyone at Big Screen Little Screen for giving us the opportunity to... Uh, to talk tonight. Um, as Paul said, I'm the founder of the New York Television Festival, which go is going into its seventh year. Uh, and I'll speak a little bit about that later. Uh, but our topic on hand is Twitter to TV. And I think it's important when we first start talking about this uh, to mention that to date, uh, there's only been one show that has successfully transitioned uh, from Twitter to TV, and that is Shit My Dad Says. There are two things I will not pay more than $5 for. Christmas presents and a cup of coffee. Perhaps my aunt. It takes talent and it takes time. And TV writing is, is also about discipline, right? Because with both Twitter and TV, you're confined to a certain amount of space where you can tell that story. So in, in television, it's 22 minutes, and you have act breaks, and there are certain uh, uh, parameters that you have to write in. And with Twitter, you have 140 characters to be able to tell this compelling micro story. And so, Mostly what I would say is that as, as a, a way to really train yourself and a way to write every day, Twitter can really help you establish a consistent voice, which is super, super important in TV development. The important thing is to get a good, funny, consistent voice, build up your audience, and I think in doing that, in keeping that consistency, in growing your audience the way that a TV show would, I think people in the industry will probably take notice of what you're doing, but I think that that takes time. So I'm Jordan Berman. I have an entertainment studio called Shore. Uh, and by the way, I just authored a white paper on half-work entertainment, 
that some IT departments may want to burn <laughs> in a big pile, uh, but you'll actually see um, this idea of sort of work and play sort of becoming one is sort of an unstoppable train coming down the tracks. So there's this, there's this idea that sort of the cigarette and coffee break has been replaced by the Facebook and Farm Bill break. And when you look at a couple of these statistics here, you know, according to a couple of studies, 20% of all time at work is spent on personal stuff. Internet is the number one time waste, or as I like to say, time investment area. Um, <laughs> according to Nielsen, 44% of all online video is viewed at work. And some of the statistics that uh, Break has shared is that 4 p.m. is in fact their peak, and there's a real big build between 8 a.m. right up to 4 p.m., and then it starts to drop a little bit, uh, 5, 6, 7 p.m. The other piece there is that 64% of web users are going to use Facebook or Twitter at work. Now, if you go to the next slide, we do a little bit of a deep dive here. So 60, I'm going to say this one more time, 64% of internet users under 35 use Facebook or Twitter at work versus 29% of those of us that are over 35. But I think what's even more interesting is when you look at where people are tweeting, if you look at fourth below there, 36% of folks under 35 are tweeting after sex. This is, and this is only 2009 data. This is worse yeah. now. So, so it's probably much higher. 8% of those of us 35 and older are tweeting after sex. So if there's any takeaway from Social Media Week, it's that tweet-worthy sex ends at age 35. <laughs> and I think as more millennials move into the workforce, and really the entire workforce starts to look at social media almost as, as much of a, a staple as email, you're just going to see it be a, become a part of office life, and that's really what we're all about with the OFC uh, Office Entertainment Network. Um, if you go to the last slide, that's my contact information. I'm very happy to send you guys uh, the white paper on at work entertainment. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up and Ooh. open it to any questions. This, this is a list, by the way, of all the companies that are here today. So, so this is probably the coolest thing you've ever seen. So with that being said, <laughs> Damien and Vin. Uh, and I hope we can live up to that. Uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you to Digital Thompson. Do you want a beer? Uh, no, I think I'm okay. <laughs> we are from WeLostOurGold.com. It's basically a, a treasure hunt online. Uh, we came up with a web series of eight videos, and we decided to hide uh, clues that lead to a buried treasure that's actually still out there. Just so you know. So when this is over, watch all the videos and go find the treasure. Ten thousand dollars. Tune it up. <laughs> no, the, the trailer really explains what we're doing, and our family members and close friends don't believe that we actually did this. This is all an out of we pocket. Believe, we believe. Yay! Thank you, sir. <laughs> so yeah.